Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and in another cook with me video. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. We'd love to have you as part of our family here on YouTube. And for those of you guys who keep coming back, thank you so very much. Uh, my name is Sue in case I haven't mentioned that. For those of you guys who are new to me, um, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. So the this video was actually created uh, before I went on vacation, so I'm a little bit unsure of how it's going to go, but I'm going to go ahead and wing it and do the voiceover for it so I can get it put up. Um, but first up, it looks like I am making chicken strips. So I'm just cutting off the yucky bits of this chicken and getting it prepped to go into the air fryer. Now, uh, several people had asked me if I was going to upload a video showing my Butterfinger cake, and I, it's in this video here for those of you guys who are interested, and it's towards the end of the video. It might even be the last video clips of this video. <coughs> so stick around if you want to know the recipe for that, because I'm going to show you how I put it together at the end. Um... So yes, I'm just cleaning my chicken. I hate touching raw chicken. I don't know if anybody else out there is like me. Um, I wish they would just clean it before they put it in the package. Um, that would make my life easier and then that way I don't have to touch it. But then again, I'm not going to eat chicken off the bone either. So there's that. Uh, so what I'm doing here is just making a wash for my chicken so that I can bread it and uh, I do my white washes a little bit simple it's just eggs milk salt and pepper and that's it um, I have a kid that doesn't like spicy stuff so I stop there with the seasonings um, although if he had a little bit more tolerant of a palate I would you know add some like Tony's or something in there as well depending on you know what I'm in the mood for but uh, my youngest one is a non-spice kind of guy so salt and pepper it is and then I'm just making another dish over here it's gonna have my flour <coughs> and breadcrumbs in it I uh, bread my chicken like this uh, to save me a step, but you could also do egg wash, flour, egg wash, and then put it into breadcrumbs. I just uh, don't do that because I'm busy and I'm lazy. So I usually just bread my chicken one time, but by all means, if you like a more crunchier outside, I would suggest going uh, putting your chicken into the egg wash and then into regular flour and then bringing it back out putting it in egg wash again and then putting it in breadcrumbs you will get a more toastier um, crunchy outside if you do that um, and then here I am you know just breading, breading it up and I do believe that when it comes to putting my chicken in the air fryer I put it on for about 20 minutes at 350 um, or use the chicken setting on there um, I also go into my chicken and spread or spray a little bit of some olive oil cooking spray on top of it that will also get you a little bit uh, crispier of an outside um, to your chicken if that's what you're looking for um, this is so good I, I love doing this it is a little bit more time consuming than what I like to do for dinner especially um, in the summertime uh, but in the winter time this would be a great little dinner to cook up in your air fryer during the winter time when you have a little bit more time if you're busy like me uh, our summers are full of all the fun plus uh, you know we have sports in the summer we usually play baseball and football and right now that now that we're back off of vacation we're doing both of them at the same time so that's a little exciting so oh you know what sometimes I use the olive oil spray but it looks like in this video I use the butter spray and I just spray it to the outside um, like I said I do my chicken strips uh, at 350 for 
about 20 minutes and then I flip it over and cook it for a few more minutes after that but an easier way just to make your chicken is um, use the chicken setting stop it about halfway through and flip it over uh, I just am weird about uh, making sure my chicken gets cooked thoroughly I have a weird thing about chicken I don't know let me know in the comments down below if you're like me um, but basically there's that I just did a side of, of uh, roasted veggies and some J Hughes uh, sugar-free mustard because um, I'm trying to watch my calorie intake you know what I'm saying um, I think what I'm getting ready to prepare right now is uh, some KFC bowls. I don't know if you guys ever have cooked this at home, but if you are in the mood for a very comfort food, quick, easy dish casserole that you can make like any night of the week and it's only going to take you a few minutes to get it ready, I highly suggest this one for you. Uh, my family loves this. Uh, they would probably have it at least once every week if I would cook it for them. Um, and right now, since I just started doing Weight Watchers a few weeks ago, I'm going to be turning this recipe for myself into a lower calorie recipe so that I can eat it as well. Um, if you guys are interested in the Weight Watchers recipes, uh, let me know. Um, I generally tend to cook myself the Weight Watchers version of whatever my family is eating. In this video, however, I am not doing that because I made this video before I started Weight Watchers, so there's that. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut up your potatoes and you're gonna make uh, mashed potatoes. You're gonna peel them, cut them. You're gonna make mashed potatoes like you normally would. You're gonna get some olive oil spray here and you're just gonna spray that cookie sheet down and you're going to take some popcorn chicken. I just get the great value kind. Um, it's the kind that my family likes the best out of all the popcorn chicken you can buy frozen. And you're going to uh, put that on your cookie sheet. And you're going to put it in the oven and follow the instructions per the package on the outside. Um, and here I am. You're going to get... Uh, you're going to get yourself a casserole dish there. And you're going to put your mashed potatoes into uh, your casserole dish like that. Um, as you can see, my potatoes are awful hot. And it looks to me like I'm burning myself in retrospect there. But um, you're just going to put your mashed potatoes in the pan. And then you're going to uh, smooth it out. You want to get that into like one nice little thin layer there um, and then you are going to get yourself some brown gravy packets and you're going to make the brown gravy as per the instructions as you can see you just want to follow the instructions you can also get the jarred stuff you can also make your gravy by scratch if you want to it's all depending on how you want to do things uh, this particular day I would did, just did it by the package I then put the brown gravy all over the mashed potatoes like so this is like one of my family's favorite things to eat I kid you not um, and as a matter of fact when I went grocery shopping this week I picked up the stuff to make this again um, that's how much they like it and then you are going to throw your uh, little popcorn chickens on top of all over the um, gravy there you can by all means put corn in this dish um, this particular day I did not put corn in here because I don't like my corn in my mashed potatoes and because I was um, cooking for everybody I just made the corn separate and they were able to put the corn on top of um, theirs if they decided they wanted corn on there some of us do some of us don't uh, and then you're just gonna throw that bad boy right back into the oven I would say give it another like 10 minutes um, but if you were putting the corn on there I suggest putting the corn and then putting it in the oven and then you can throw some cheese on it or whatever so next step is going to be um, this is cheese tortellini I like to put beef in my cheese tortellini so what I done was this is the first time I was making this in the crock pot I made this in the crock pot if I was to make this on the stove I would do it a little bit different um, 
but in the crock pot when you add a ton of cheese to your cheese tortellini okay it gets a little bit on the thick and rich side I don't know why that is because I've made this exact same thing on the stovetop and didn't have that problem but uh, you just want to get yourself some frozen tortellini you want to get about a half a stick of butter and then you're gonna get some cream cheese and you're gonna throw all that in there um, if I was to do this in the crock pot again I would probably only go half that container of cream cheese for sure um, you're gonna get yourself some chicken alfredo sauce I just got the great value kind um, I feel like the great value Alfredo sauce is way better than any of the other Alfredo sauces. Uh, I don't know if it's just because I add a whole bunch of spices to my Alfredo sauce or what, but that's the way I roll. And then I put a pound of ground beef in there that I've cooked up. And then you're going to get some mozzarella cheese, and I think this is where I went a little on the crazy side. Um, I think I put too much cheese in there because at the end I top it again with some more cheese and it was completely fine and it was delicious uh, but when it came down to it it was a really really rich dish uh, my family loved it but it was a little too cheesy for me and that's saying a lot because if you've watched any of my other videos you know that you can see how thick and creamy that is that is like some thick lots of cheese so if you're a cheese connoisseur that's the dish for you but I would go a little bit lighter on that cream cheese if I were you if you don't want it so rich okay so this is um, like some teriyaki chicken that I've made in the crock pot um, I'm not a big fan I didn't particularly like this dish but my family did so I probably end up making it again we will see so all I'm doing here is just putting frozen chicken in the crock pot um, you're going to crank that bad boy up on high uh, and you can do that for four hours or you can drop it down to low and do it for six to eight hours up to you I'm adding a cup of orange pineapple juice in this uh, <coughs> crock pot there along with some soy sauce um, if I was doing it again I would get regular just straight pineapple juice for that um, it could have been the orange flavor in that uh, juice that I put in there that maybe I didn't like. I don't know. There was something about it, some kind of tang to it that I would do differently for my particular taste. But my family really, really loved it. Um, and we had it just like on buns, just like a pulled chicken sandwich would be. Except for it was a teriyaki version, obviously, because you see me put brown sugar and soy sauce in there. Um... But the boys in my family, big fan, put a little bit more soy sauce in there. And then you just set it aside in the crock pot and let it go do its thing. Um, and then you end up with uh, a very teriyaki chicken. You see there I have roasted vegetables. My family did eat theirs on bun like a pulled pork sandwich though. Okay, so next up, while that's cooking, obviously, I decided that I was making strawberry shortcake for dessert this night. So, um, I just start cutting this up, and everybody probably pretty much knows how to make a strawberry shortcake. Um, but because I was filming it in combination to the pulled chicken sandwiches that we ate, um, it's in this clip. So, we're just going to go with it and watch what I do. So basically I'm just cutting up these strawberries um, and I'm putting it into this bowl. I mean, strawberry shortcake's pretty simple. Um, you can make it a whole bunch of different ways, but this is the way that my grandmother used to make it. Um, I do believe as I'm watching the video, because like I said, it's been a while since I recorded it. Sometimes I make it uh, one way, sometimes I make it this way. Um, this is the way my grandma used to make it for sure I can tell just by the way that I'm cutting up the strawberries she always cut the berries in half and then half again um, so yeah that's what we're doing here and then you're getting ready to see me wash these strawberries um, we have a family of five so it looks like I'm making you know two pints of strawberries here but uh, my grandma used to do all kinds of 
crazy things to strawberries. That's why I keep kind of reminiscing as I'm thinking about what I'm doing here in the kitchen. Uh, some of the things that she used to do with strawberries. She used to make like strawberry cakes and uh, dump cakes. And there was a time where like in the summertime she was like obsessed with cobblers. So she made like a strawberry cobbler, which was really good. I need to get out my old cookbooks and try and find some of those older recipes. My grandma used to make this uh, walnut, this buttercream walnut cake that was divine. If you like walnuts, I mean, I've never had, it's probably the best cake I've ever eaten in my life was that walnut cake that she used to make. And she used to make it all the time in the summer. She didn't do much baking in the wintertime, which I always thought was funny as a, at, whenever I was a kid because, you know, it's cooler in your house in the wintertime. That'd be the time to do all the baking. But she really didn't do any baking during the, the summer. It was always... I mean, during the winter, it was always in the summer, minus uh, Christmas cookies and things like that at Christmas time. So I like to set my, I like to wash my strawberries and I like fill it up with water. I let it sit there and then I strain it. Um, my grandma always used to put strawberry preserves inside of her strawberry sauce. Uh, this is the sugar-free version of strawberry preserves, but by all means, if you're not watching what you eat, um, I would put in regular strawberry preserves and all it takes is just a little bit, um, of that strawberry preserves. And I just, we just use it as a thickening agent with that, um, sugar there. Um, of course you could probably, if you're like doing Weight Watchers or on a diet or something, you could easily substitute stevia or something like that for your strawberries. And that's it. That's what it looks like. Um, but that strawberry preserves, I'm telling you, it makes or breaks that sauce if you like a little bit thicker sauce on your strawberry shortcake. Now, to the final, uh, final recipe in this video is my Butterfinger cake. Now, uh, this is fairly simple. I know a lot of people have asked me to make this cake, um, and it is delicious. So you're just going to get an age of food cake and you're just going to make it according to the instructions on the box. Um, and then you're going to bake it as per usual, like you would any other angel fruit cake or angel food cake in the box. Um, I think I got a little carried away this day and I think that I cooked my angel food cake just a little too long. So, and I have one of those ovens that, um, you know, are very touchy very touchy oven if you don't pay attention to the oven you're either going to over bake or under bake um, what's going on in your oven you know what I'm saying I um, am, like I said I'm just mixing this angel fruit food cake up like I the instructions say in the box and my oven is preheating preheating in the background you know what I'm saying um, but you're getting ready to see how I think I overcooked my cake just slightly in just a second. Um, this is a actually really, really good cake to make. And you can even cheat uh, when you make this and buy like a pre-made angel uh, food cake and tear it up into like chunks and put it down in the bottom. And then just add your toppings uh, to the top of this if you wanted to. I mean, it works out pretty well the way you want to do it. I like doing simple things so I get out my little hand mixer here because as you guys know you need to do that if you're making an angel food cake because you want to get as much air out of there as possible um, so you know you just want to mix it up a little bit and do the thing get it all nice and frothy is that the correct word frothy Feel like I'm getting it so so frothy that I'm gonna over overflow the bowl. It's been a while for real since I filmed this, so I'm just kind of winging it of what I'm talking about because I have no idea what comes next, and I didn't preview the video before I started voicing over it. So my bad, my bad.
It looks cute. It looks pretty though. I like it looks nice and smooth. While I finish uh, making this uh, angel food cake, I just wanted to see, let me know in the comments down below, are you guys uh, staying healthy and well? I'm interested. Also, if there's anything else that you guys would like to uh, see me cook, then let me know down below. Like I said, I did just start, uh, I just started Weight Watchers and I've been doing Weight Watchers now for about two and a half three weeks and I've lost six pounds already so if you're interested in like some Weight Watchers videos or what I eat in a day let me know I'm more than happy to film those for you I know there's a lot of folks out there on on YouTube that do those videos but I am a very simple uh like snacky kind of eater so uh oh so now breaking news okay let me let me skip that part for a second and we'll go into here what you're going to want to do is make a vanilla pudding uh the vanilla pudding that i'm making is a sugar-free pudding but by all means if you're not watching what you what you're eating then you can uh go ahead and use just a regular vanilla pudding and you're just going to mix that you want to do an instant pudding so you don't have to wait for it to cool down um, and you're just going to make that according to the instructions on the back of the box. Um, everybody usually knows how to make a pudding. If not, the instructions are right there. It's fairly simple. You just add your milk, add your mix, and then, you know, whip it. Whip it good. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. If you don't know, I'm 40 years old and uh, I grew up in the 80s, so disregard my singing there's a lot of things that uh, I see and I just start singing lyrics because I'm doing the action if that makes any sense but anyway if there's anything that you guys would like to see as far as like Weight Watchers recipes or what I eat in a day just let me know um, I'm more than happy to share those with you um, I do go to work so anything that I eat during the day is going to be like a quick and easy situation if that makes any sense um so as you can see on the one corner of my cake there i think i cooked it too much and in reality i did so all i'm doing here is i'm taking a uh, back of a spoon and i'm just tearing into that cake a little bit puncturing some holes in there so that when i put my pudding on top of that um, it soaks down into the angel food cake. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this step. You can by all means just pour that pudding right on top of the cake and it'll sit there on top and it'll be fine. Um, but I definitely overcooked that cake a little bit. Definitely did. And then you're just going to make your layer of um, pudding over the top of that. And then you guys are going to get a container of whipped cream and you're going to put the whipped cream over the top of that. And then the final step is to get the little chopped up already Butterfinger uh, little candy pieces and put it over the top of your whipped cream. So good. This cake is so delicious. And that is going to finish this video out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, even though it was kind of rambly and weird because I didn't pre-watch it. Um, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button. We'd really love to have you as part of our family here on YouTube. If there's any kind of recipes that you want me to make for you guys, let me know in the comments below. I'm more than happy to try something new and to cook for you guys anytime you guys want. Um, and I will make sure that I keep filming these types of videos for you guys because you guys seem to like them. Um, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. I also have an Instagram you can follow me over on. It's always in the description bar below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box. Thanks for watching.